Hi guys, it's Marin with Fargo Underground here for a Wednesday edition of Hot or of <laughs> Off Topic. Sorry, it's hot in here. Um, what I want to talk about today is I have Chris with us from Sons of Norway, and I he has some great ideas, some great things he wants to show us. And so we're not going to wait any longer. Let's bring in Chris. There you are. Hello, Chris. How are you? Good dog, good dog. Welcome, welcome into Sons of Norway. How are you today? I am wonderful. Thank you very much. Good. I am so glad you got to join us. Uh, Sons of Norway has a special place in my heart, and I can't wait to show everybody else everything that's been going on. Um, yeah, we're start. Fantastic. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. Um, start off. Just share with me. I know you have an extensive background and knowledge of the building you're in. Um, Share some of the history and background of Sons of Norway for us. Well, Sons of Norway is a um, it's a benefits uh, organization. Uh, it's like a fraternal organization that was originally founded in 1895. So this year we are celebrating our 125th anniversary of the Sons of Norway. And as an organization, it began as a, a way to provide potential financial stability to the new immigrant community who were uh, not as fortunate as other established communities in being able to provide the kinds of financial tools to weather hardship, which if you know anything about life uh, on the prairies and uh, in the Midwest 125 years ago, you would know that things were rather tough. So uh, death was much more rampant, uh, disease, uh, those types of things. So a, a means for Norwegians to band together and form a sense of financial stability. So it began as that, as a benefits fraternity. Uh, for those of you who might be familiar with things like Knights of Columbus, they do that as well. Um, the Vasa organization for the Swedes do that. There are many, many organizations like that are like that. But the Sons of Norway also had a heritage and a historical connection to it. There was a quickly a notion that given that Norwegians were far, far from their homeland, they uh, needed some sort of sense of connection, uh, some sort of sense of community. So the Sons of Norway, provided not only financial stability, but they also provided community. And it gave the opportunity for new immigrants to, to collectively and cooperatively preserve and promote their language, their culture, things like food, uh, things like their history. So uh, it grew out of that meager be beginning in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and chapters of Sons of Norway began to form uh, throughout the Midwest and incorporated and included the coasts. And uh, Sons of Norway here in Fargo was incorporated early, early on in that, um, in that history. Now, this area of the Sons of Norway did not <clears throat> thrive. Uh, primarily, it didn't thrive because in the 1930s, you know, there was the Dust Bowl, there was strife, there was the Great Depression. And with the emptying of the prairies, the number of chapters in this state diminished. We still had, however, a Sons of Norway Lodge in Fargo, being that was the largest community, one also in Grand Forks. Uh, and we had a facility that we used for the Sons of Norway Lodge right on Broadway. So if ever you are uh, on Broadway and you look up at the top cornices of the building, on the east side, I think it's above Toasted Frog, you will see the shield and the S off N of Sons of Norway beckoning to you from high on the rooftop. But in 1974, by that time, uh, Sons of Norway was thriving again. And in particular, it was thriving in this state and in Montana. And uh, it was thriving due to the efforts of people here in this community who promised <laughs> that they could expand the Sons of Norway. So they did. And, and what, uh, what we have here is a former Buick 
auto dealership that mm. in 1973 was purchased by the Sons of Norway, Lodge 25, Kringen Lodge. And uh, it was renovated and it was one of the jewels uh, in all of Sons of Norway. And I look forward to giving you a tour of this place because not only do we preserve much of the 1973-1974 chic uh, fashion that existed in 1973-1974, but we just completed a renovation of our kitchen and we have done other work throughout the facility to update it so that it is truly ready for all uh, this community who wants to uh, participate in the kinds of things that Sons of Norway has to offer. Well, I can't wait for the tour. Um, I just have a couple things that I kind of want to share with people. Um, for sure. those who aren't familiar with the Sons of Norway, you have a lot of you have a lot of different classes and a lot of different events that take place. Yes, My question would be for you to let other people know how to get involved in those, what kind of things that are offered there, but also that you also don't have to be a full member, but the cool people are members. And well, the first thing fun. you have to do <laughs> is you have to open these doors right behind me. I know they're big, they're imposing, they're in, maybe even intimidating. They are indeed heavy doors, heavy mm -hmm. wooden doors. And all you have to do is pull on it and open it up. Once <laughs> inside, you are welcome to participate with all of your friends and neighbors here at the Sons of Norway. And that includes our Kringen Cafe. That includes the Troll Lounge. And if you want to participate in other things that this lodge has to offer, you are welcome to as well. Now membership is indeed something that we would encourage and mm -hmm. membership uh, allows you to participate in these activities at a much lower cost than you would otherwise have yeah, if you're not a member. But we don't want membership to be a barrier. We want you to find sufficient value in being a member of Sons of Norway that you will want to become a member and join with your friends and neighbors. Correct. Now, a lot of people, what most people might think of who aren't familiar with the Sons of Norway is that lunch and the pie day. Now, that's yes, something that is, is you now with COVID, I know that changed a lot. Is that still going on? Oh, is it? Like, when you can, can you tell that can I am still participating <laughs> in pie day. Pie day is and, back. <laughs> uh, I was here even today for lunch. Lunch is still served from 11.30 a.m. until 1.30 and uh, we do have changes, of course, that uh, were made due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to try and give you just a quick view of that if I turn this around. Uh, once you enter the Sons of Norway and you come through our beautiful heavy wooden doors, you will notice right when coming in the dining room. And here at the dining room, we have uh, the station set up where you would choose what type of meal you want. Every day there is a special. You can choose from our menu boards. And uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have a wide selection of pies individually wrapped now for your protection and safety that you can choose from. And then you would come over, choose your beverage, pay, and sit down in this beautiful dining room served by our lovely volunteers. So it'd be like you sitting down and having lunch with your grandparents. I promise you, it is that delightful. And I remember that, and it was. And another thing, you don't have to be a member to come for lunch. Not at all. No. So that's, that's an important thing to let people know as well. And that might, you know, that's a good way to come in and, and see the facility and and know what's there and then, then join and, and get used to it. Yeah. And, you know, but get your foot in the door and the lunch is a great way to do that. Mm. Indeed. Uh, and oh. Starting next week, we will be beginning our Tuesday socials. Um, I shouldn't say we'll begin that next week. We're, we're intending to begin them in June. Now, we are quite aware of the risks that are involved with 
uh, the current pandemic. And I don't want anyone to think that we are taking that lightly, that we are not uh, serious in our interest in preserving and protecting our members and the public. So uh, we are trying desperately to figure out how we can do this in a way that is safe for everyone. But we do want uh, an opportunity for our members to, again, gather safely, socially distant, uh, but within, uh, you know, Scandinavians show their affection for one another by the depth of their scowl. And it's easier to see that looking uh, when you don't have a mask. So <clears throat> we do want to make sure that everybody is safe, but we are going to try and open up in ways that are meaningful and safe. Okay. Let me show you here again, the dining room, you can see that the tables are all <clears throat> of a sufficient space from one another that we should be able to preserve that notion of safe social distance. Uh, we've got more room in the back. You'll see all of these chairs that are set up right now or, or turned up because we have limited amount of seating here available uh, right now with the pandemic. And did I, is it still current that you can have your lunch at the Sons of Norway or you can you have can. takeout as well? We do have takeout as well. And if you would like to uh, call beforehand, we can have it made up for you. Uh, tomorrow's special is a lingonberry pulled pork sandwich. Uh, of course, we have our regular uh, menu items as well. But Friday... Friday is free dessert day if you order an entree. And uh, the dessert, I believe, on Friday is going to be a, a banana bread pudding. Yes, dessert. it is. <laughs> and I'll reserve and, that table right in the corner. <laughs> yeah. And uh, additionally, uh, on Friday, the special is going to be a hot turkey sandwich. So those of you who are looking for something hot and hearty, this is the place to go. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so you, you covered the lunches. That was one of the main things that maybe people recognize with the Sons of Norway. I want to talk about the hidden gem. I call it the downtown hidden gem is the Troll Lounge. Indeed. Now, a I lot of people, I think, maybe aren't as familiar with it. The, you have great bands. You have many, many events that take place in there. I think Indeed we do. without a doubt, the hidden gem. We have here, I'm going to turn it back to me. So sorry, I, I want to raise this level of excitement <laughs> and anticipation. So when we go in yes. <laughs> to the uh, Troll Lounge, um, we have a lot of things that are culturally significant and relevant. We've got lots of people who are particularly gifted in crafting. So if you want to learn how to do hard on your uh, stitching, if you want to learn how to do carving, if you want to learn how to do rose modeling, if you want to learn Norwegian, all of those things are available. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention as well the opportunity through the Sons of Norway of going on our uh, bus tours. So we arrange a dozen bus tour trips every summer, not this summer, however, mm -hmm. where we try and uh, move around to some of the interesting things that uh, exist uh, in uh, down the cities, out to Minot, uh, destinations that are relevant and interesting and fun. So that being said, I wanted to just quickly point out here across from the Troll Lounge is our display case. And today we've got a couple of examples of our rose mauling. And if you wanted to learn how to rose maul, here is where you're going to do it. Now, I promise you, after years and years of trying rose mauling myself, I don't come anywhere near the kind of detail and beauty that uh, these are examples of. And here you can see a traditional Norwegian costume on a doll, rose mauling on a, a trunk. And anyway, so I wanted to give you that as I turn and show you the portico, the great arch that leads us into 
the Troll Lounge. I just wanted to show you that this is all hand carved. And this was done in 1974 uh, <clears throat> by a gentleman, uh, Arvid, oh gosh, now I'm uh, drawing a Christensen, Arvid Christensen, who uh, did also the mural here in the Troll Lounge and all of the other carvings that you have on the wall. Now, we just uh, were finishing up the ballroom as well as the kitchen. So I apologize for things here in the Troll Lounge that typically wouldn't be here, <clears throat> uh, including this drunkard gentleman who has found a place to sleep in the corner. He normally haunts other places throughout the Troll Lounge. But here you see, I'm going to give you a, a view of this beautiful mural mm -hmm. that covers really three of the walls of the Troll Lounge. And each one of these carvings that are attached to the wall have some sort of significance in relation to the troll story. Here's our small stage. On this small stage, you will see occasionally like accordion bands. You will see uh, mandolin or ukulele bands. The Kringen Choir comes in here to play. Here we've got our piano. So we can have a hootin' good time, a hootin' nanny here. If uh, you want to come in and play piano, you're more than welcome to do so. Probably one of the most uh, exciting and important things here at the Sons of Norway to many of our members, and I'm being a little facetious here, is our free popcorn. So come <laughs> on Tuesday evenings for Social Night, and you can have some free popcorn. Now, I wanted to also show you this bar. Now, what makes this bar unique and interesting is it's intended to, to look like the bow of a Viking ship with that mural, well, I shouldn't say, the mirrors in the back with the Norwegian flag, that is the sail of the Viking ship. And all of these chairs that are here surrounding the bar have a shield on the back, just like one would presume a Viking ship would have. Mm -hmm. So here we've got three more drunkard gentlemen, uh, our normal uh, members of Sons and Ari. I'm just kidding. And, uh, you know, it's, it's fun for everybody to come in and try and spot all the trolls that are either painted or they are in statue or they are wood carvings throughout the troll lounge. We'd love to see you down here, by the way. Yeah. It's, it, it's the one thing when people walk in, they say they feel like they're at their small town and it's so welcoming and it it is something that i would love you know everybody to know and to find out one small part of the sons of norway that they might not have known about i mean it's i think it's an important thing as everything is there mm -hmm. um but i also know there's a lot of things spread out that have meaning that people really just need to come in and see i mean it would Absolutely. take you a long time to walk around and show every item that has significance and is an important piece as being yes. why it's there. Um, you know, this really does serve the mission of the organization to provide some sort of cultural center. Right. And uh, it's not just the Sons of Norway that utilize this space. The Nordic Culture Clubs, as example, which is a, a grouping of all of the Scandinavian, I shouldn't say only Scandinavian, I should say Nordic, uh, groups in the community. So uh, that way we can include the Sami and the Finns, the Finnish clubs as being part of the Nordic organizations. But there's also the Icelandics, the Danes, and of course the Swedes. And uh, this is a natural place for the various members of the Nordic culture clubs to come to meet, to interact. And uh, this facility has a a library that we can use as a resource. So <clears throat> join and you have access to uh, a number of resources, not only literature, but mm -hmm. music, uh, opportunities for you to socialize and sing. We've got a choir, we've got an accordion band. I mentioned that we have a ukulele group. Yeah, these are the kinds of, some might say hokey, 
but they are darling. They are delightful. And uh, it is all so joyful when all of the members get together and they play a folk song. They sing a folk song. Um, they remember fondly sitting and knitting or uh, tell stories as they're carving. Uh, truly, this is uh, uh, one of the most magical places in Fargo-Moorhead. I agree. It, it holds, <clears throat> excuse me, good memories for me. I remember being five and being with my grandma making the washcloths. And um, yeah. uh, we had our wedding dance in the ballroom. So there you I go. Much his, a lot of history with that. Um, but that leads me to my next question. I know there's a new kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of thought was gone went into that. If you could kind of walk us around and show us a little bit. We are excited very excited about our new kitchen i'm going to take you for a little trip into our kitchen now as a commercial kitchen it may not be something that uh is so exciting to you but this is all updated uh equipment and it makes our ability to serve and to cater so much better while we have updated our our refrigeration our uh, freezer space, all new equipment for our uh, ovens and our stove, and just the space that this is granting us to more effectively, efficiently serve meals is amazing. Wow. So we had a very generous benefactor who was concerned about the ability to, of the Sons of Norway to... <clears throat> flourish in the future mm -hmm. and his and his uh, he and his wife uh guarantee and paid for the renovation of this kitchen and we are so grateful for that and we are so excited now that we can finally open this up to the public and serve you some of those fantastic norwegian foods obviously i showed you the menu board and there is more to uh, Norwegian food than lefse, and there's more to it than uh, lutefisk. But we are excited to have our lutefisk dinners again. And I know, Marin, you and I and our friends are really excited about getting back to having Torsk. Yes. Once a month on Thursday, we pray to the cod gods <laughs> and have a wonderful piece Amazing. of Torsk drowning in butter, and we raise a glass of Akavid, we sing a song, and we learn something. Yes. And uh, if you are interested in being a member of Sons of Norway, if you're interested in being a member of Torse Club, please come on down and join us. We would love to see you here. If you've never had Torse before, I promise you, it is better than lobster. I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> One thing t for people to know that they can find you um, on Facebook, mm -hmm. and Lodge, and your website, you have, That's, yep, and, do. and you will have all of your events, and they can check everything out from there, correct? We do. Okay. And those of you who are looking for space to have uh, events, we have our newly uh, updated ballroom. I say newly re updated in that we've added a couple of things here. Space for storage so we can make it look nice and uh, tidy. We just had the floors redone so when you want to come and do your polkas and your waltzes you're going to slip and slide properly on the floor without hopefully falling and breaking a hip. Um, we have uh, space that we are going to again use for displaying much of our artwork so that you see some of it still, but it's going to be put back up here. This is also the space that we use for uh, many of our cultural events, which include celebrations for Sutnamai, which is the 17th of May, also, also known as Norwegian Constitution Day. You can see here we've got space where we pull down our screen and we can uh, show movies, uh, all kinds of events occur here in this space. And it's open. Just call down here to the 
Sons in our way, Allison is going to be happy to uh, help you book your uh, event. And <clears throat> I, uh, it'll be a wonderful event. Great kitchen for food. Yes. Excellent facilities for, like I said, uh, dance or uh, uh, if you're having your um, convention. This is a, a, an excellent location for it. I agree. One thing before you leave us, I'd mm -hmm. like if you could show us what the outside of the building looks like. If people aren't familiar where it is, um, kind of let, let them see outside. A lot of people have an address, but they want a visual of where you are. Absolutely. 722 2nd <laughs> Avenue North here in Fargo. I'm going to walk out this door and we will all be blinded with this beautiful sun. Absolutely beautiful. So here you see we've got Barry Hall across the street for the uh, NDSU. We've got Cly Hall and we've got the post office and the beautiful Presbyterian Church. We've got lots of parking, so that's uh, available for you. You can't really see, but here across the street in the parking lot is the statue of Rolo, who uh, is the king, was the, well, the prince of, uh, of Normandy, and he is the ancestor of William the Conqueror, the Norman who invaded England. Well, there's uh, lots of Norwegian connections here in town. Of course, we have Concordia College. There you can see some Norwegian statues. If you ever go to Island Park, you will see uh, the Vigeland statue right in the middle of the uh, Island Park. All of these are representative of the kind of vibrancy that existed in the Norwegian community right from the founding of Fargo. And it is our pleasure to maintain that heritage, to celebrate it, and to preserve and promote it. Please, put a little Norski in your life. Come on down to the Sons of Norway. We would love to see you. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to show everybody what's new and what you have to offer at Sons of Norway. It's just, it's it takes longer to have people walk around and see what's amazing than we can show in this little time. But hopefully it sparks some interest for people that they great time is lunch. Come down for lunch. Check it out and start from there. But thank you so much for taking the time. And again, people can Monday through Friday. Come on yeah. down. And they can find you on Facebook, on your website. Indeed. So hopefully they all come down. Thank you so much. We will talk to you soon.